Welcome to the very first video on dinosaurs. Now, dinosaurs dominated the Earth around 165 million years ago during the Mesozoic era. And around 66 million years ago, they simply vanished off the Earth. And we will cover many of the theories surrounding that disappearance in future videos. Now, not all of the dinosaurs died off. They live on today as birds. Yes, birds are in fact dinosaurs. So when you see those birds flying around, you are looking into the past at dinosaurs. And that's pretty much been proven by paleontologists today. And we'll get into that in future videos as well. Now, some of the largest dinosaurs were over 100 feet long and up to 50 feet tall, if you can imagine that. But there were much smaller dinosaurs. Many were the size of modern birds today. Now, there were many different kinds of dinosaurs that lived at different times. Some walked on two legs, others walked on four legs, and there were many that were armor-plated, some had horns, and then there were fast dinosaurs like the raptors, and then there were much slower dinosaurs. And it is believed there were over a thousand different species of dinosaurs, and we are going to cover many of these throughout the series. But before we get to dinosaurs, I want to use this video to set up the timelines involved, and that's going to be the framework for the entire series. Okay, let's take a look at the very first timeline, and this is going to be a broad timeline and actually over the next few slides we'll break this out into more specific timelines to include the various geological periods that are associated with dinosaurs. Now the earth was formed approximately 4.54 billion years ago and then around 4 billion years ago the first forms of life start to appear and these were in the form of bacteria and so today paleontologists have found several fossilized remains of this ancient bacteria. Now fast forward three and a half billion years later and you get to the time where the first invertebrates appear. So if you think about that, for three and a half billion years, there's not much in the oceans. If you were able to travel back during this time period, you wouldn't see a whole lot because the oceans were dominated by microscopic life forms. Now about 665 million years ago, the first invertebrates appear. And what are invertebrates? Those are insects, worms, clams, uh, crabs, snails. And the common characteristic between all invertebrates is that they do not possess a backbone. They do not have vertebrae like we do. And all mammals, reptiles, fish, they have vertebrae. And vertebrates like mosquitoes do not. Now around 150 million years later, the first vertebrates appear. And as I said, those have vertebrae they have a backbone. And these were fish. So everything is in the ocean at this point. There's nothing on land. That's the main point I want to make. All of this is underwater. Now around 300 million years later, we finally get to dinosaurs. And that is after vertebrates have evolved quite a bit. And we'll cover that in the next several videos. So again, around 231 million years ago, the first dinosaurs appear, and they existed between 231 and 66 million years ago. But around 66 million years ago, most of the dinosaurs went extinct. And at that critical juncture around 66 million years ago, something terrible happened, and there was a mass extinction of dinosaurs. The only dinosaurs that would make it out of this event were birds. And then, 200,000 years ago, the first modern humans appear. And of course, that is just a recent event when you start looking at some of the extreme periods of time involved with life on Earth. Okay, so let's take a look at another timeline here. You can see right there, 525 million years ago, the first vertebrates appear. Now, these would have been very small fish, and you probably wouldn't have taken much notice of them because the sea at this point was still dominated by invertebrates, like that sea scorpion that appears around 460 million years ago. Now, sea scorpions, which we'll talk about in the next video, were related to spiders. Now, around 375 million years ago, the first amphibians start to appear. And so fish have really started to evolve. And amphibians, of course, had lungs. And with those lungs, they were able to breathe. Now, what paleontologists think happened here is that amphibians were lurking around in shallow water and ponds. And some of those ponds would dry up. And so they needed to use those lungs to get back to an area of water. So they didn't spend a lot of time on land initially, but eventually, of course, some brave amphibian decided to stay on land, and that became the precursor to all vertebrates on land. Now, if you take a look at this creature down here, this is an ancient mammal, and this was a sail-backed 
Peleocosaur. And again, they look a lot like reptiles, but they also had some distinct characteristics that made them mammals. So these guys, as well as, I guess, what we would call normal reptiles, evolved from amphibians. But I guess the point to make here is that there were mammals on Earth before dinosaurs. And we will go over the Peleocosaurs in the next several videos. And so 231 million years ago, the dinosaurs first appear. Now, if you take a look at T. rex there, he came about only 67 million years ago. So right at the tail end of the time period during which the dinosaurs existed. So T. rex was only around for about a million years before the mass extinction event. And we'll dedicate an entire video to that because there are many theories as to why the dinosaurs disappeared. And one of the main theories is a large asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs. Okay, so let's tie it all together with the various geological time periods. Because geological time periods are intimately associated with life on Earth. Now these first six geological periods are collectively called the Paleozoic. And this is a massive time range before dinosaurs existed. And these three up here are collectively called the Mesozoic. And it is during the Mesozoic that dinosaurs existed. Now let's take a brief look at the Paleozoic first. The first period is called the Cambrian time period. And that occurred between 541 and 485 million years ago. And this is when fish and vertebrates first appear. But it is arthropods and invertebrates that dominate the oceans. Now the land was dry at this point and there was absolutely no plants or vegetation. The next time period is called the Ordovician, and that occurred between 485 and 443 million years ago. And again, life flourishes underwater, and vertebrates still dominate, but fish are starting to evolve into larger organisms, and there are still no plants or vegetation on land. And so land would have looked like a barren wasteland probably somewhat reddish in nature. The next epoch is the Silurian, and that occurred between 443 and 419 million years ago. And during this time, we're starting to see larger fish and more jawed and bony fish. And for the very first time, life appears on land, but it was just limited to plants. But these were plants that were only located near the coast. There were no plants inland. And these were very, very tiny plants. Think of it like moss almost. Now the next period is called the Devonian. And this was really a critical period in terms of evolution. It has often been called the age of fish. And so fish dominate the oceans. And for the first time we see tetrapods and amphibians. Also arthropods begin to make it on land. Arthropods being the ancient insects. And plants begin to make it on land big time. They are starting to spread inland. And plants probably never had it better during this time period because they had no natural predators. So they were allowed to greatly expand. Now the next time period is called the Carboniferous. And that occurred between 358 and 298 million years ago. And for the first time, vertebrates start to make it on land. And of course, that involves the amphibians. And after the amphibians make it onto land, they eventually evolve into reptiles and mammals. The final period of the Paleozoic was called the Permian. And that existed between 298 and 252 million years ago. And that is known for the Pangaea. And that is where all of the land masses formed one gigantic continent called Pangaea. And here we see the ancestors of the mammals evolve, and we also see archosaurs, and they are the precursor to the dinosaurs. Now at the tail end of the Permian, there was a mass extinction, and that saw a majority of the species on Earth wiped out. And that allowed the dinosaurs to become the dominant player in the next epoch, which of course is the Triassic. Now dinosaurs do not appear until about midway through the Triassic, around 231 million years ago. And then, believe it or not, there's another mass extinction. But dinosaurs survived that event, and by the time we get to the Jurassic time period, dinosaurs rule the Earth. And the Jurassic time period occurred between 201 and 145 million years ago. We also see the first birds appear in the archaeological record. And Pangaea splits into two massive continents. Now the final period of the Mesozoic is the Cretaceous. And that occurred between 145 and 65 million 
years ago. And dinosaurs still dominate the Earth. And then, as we talked about before, there is that mass extinction event at the end of the period, which wipes out the dinosaurs, except for the birds. And so we're going to use these time periods as the framework for the entire series. And so the first videos will be on the Paleozoic time era. And specifically, we'll look at the Cambrian time period in the next video. See you guys then.